Jackson. The early barnstormers put it all on the line to satisfy their thirst for speed. Now, their great-grandchildren carry the torch with the same spirit and thirst. 700 horsepower rips the earth. For one hour, nothing else matters. It'll raise the hair on the back of your neck. Rush hour on dirt, dirt. We are live at the Super Dirt Speedway, Lebanon Valley in West Lebanon, New York, for the 21st annual running of Mr. Dirt Track USA. We had a substantial power outage. The good news is we will have racing for you here live on Sports Channel. Tonight we have something very special for you. Our 75 lap Skull Racing Super Dirt Series event is the richest short track race in dirt motorsports, paying nearly $18,000 to win. And winning it can literally turn a driver's career around. Joining me is dirt motorsports racing analyst Gary Montgomery. And Gary, what does it mean to these drivers to win Mr. Dirt Track USA? Well, Doug, I talked to a number of the drivers before the race here tonight, and uh, the big deal is it would turn our season around. That seemed to be a thought that everybody had. Pay some bills. This will be a half a year's worth of tire bills for these drivers. Somebody talked about having an engine fresh, and another guy with a new roller. That's a chassis with the, all the components to, except the engine to make it go fast. Somebody else said they could go to Syracuse first class as opposed to the way they might go otherwise. Another guy I ever told me, and I won't name him, <laughs> he says, the biggest party ever, and we'd have $16,000 left over. Turn around the season. That's the general theme. The 1990s winner of this race, Mark Fleury, used the money that he earned here tonight to pool some, with some other resources and went off to college, earned his law degree from the University of Dayton just a few months ago, took his bar exam just a couple weeks ago. He's waiting for the results of that. He's not here racing tonight, but uh, so all kinds of stories. $17,500 makes a lot of difference to everybody. This great race is run on what we call a super dirt speedway. Doug, it's lightning fast, long, narrow straightaways with wicked tight turns. Somebody described it as a pair of quarter-mile drag strips with a couple corners thrown in just for kicks. Uh, it's a paperclip racetrack. A friend of mine, Joe Plazic, who's not racing here tonight, that's what he calls a paperclip. But it is tight, very narrow, very, very fast. It's a 5 8 mile. The straightaways are 660 feet long. The banks are 18 degrees, but to look at them, you'd think it was a whole lot more than that. It's a fast racetrack. We've seen contact, a lot of it in the heat races earlier. We're in for a great race. Now covering the pits and victory lane for rush hour is Cowboy Paul Small. We would normally be hearing from Cowboy right about now, but uh, we're unable to do that due to technical difficulties. But uh, he was to talk to us about a true testament of the Lebanon Valley racing family. And of course, we're talking about the Tremonts. The Tremonts, uh, certainly, they are the mainstay of this racetrack. Ken C Tremont Sr. has been coming here for the entire Every race they've had, with the exception of one, I believe, is they've been operating here for over 40 years, 44 years, I believe it is. He'd never won a track championship. He'd owned cars for a number of years. A lot of different drivers drove for him, but he never earned a track championship until his son, uh, Ken Jr., won, and he's now won eight of those championships. So there's a lot of stories we'll tell them about as the evening progresses. Let's take a quick look at the Skull Racing Super Dirt Series points picture. And leading the way is Brett Hearn. He's having another wonderful season. He's got a couple of wins. They came at Cornwall and Granby earlier this summer. Doug Hoffman is second. Uh, he was a winner at Drummondville. Our Fonda winner, Jimmy Horton, was third. Billy Decker, Alan Johnson, who's not here tonight, incidentally, is fifth in points. Dave Kamara, sixth. And the next six, Danny Johnson, Jeff Hetzler, Tim Fuller, Kenny Tremont, Steve Payne, and Frank Cozy. Now, let's take a look at the current Skull Points leader, Brett Hearn, and the Mighty Mod Squad running a special show here Tuesday night near the end of the race. Watch this as two of Dirt's heavyweights tangle. Here's the videotape. Watch the number three of Brett Hearn and the number 87 of Jimmy Horton as they head into turn one, turn two, and then down the back straightaway. Look at the collision. Brett Hearn, hard cut. It's just a, a situation where we were going down the straightaway and uh, we got about halfway down the straightaway and we hooked wheels, uh, his left front to my right rear and uh, turned me out towards the wall. I, I just feel real fortunate that we didn't 
completely destroy a race car because we were about uh, as close as you can get to rolling over. And, you know, the, the straightaways here are very fast. Uh, we ended up um, basically destroying the front clip of the car. We had to uh, replace that yesterday and made for a long day, but we're back. Well, just neither one of us give an inch, you know, and we just run hard and we're like magnets, the two of us. We always end up together somehow, you know, and it's, it's one of them deals. We just run out of racing room and we both got wrecked. Well, bad blood between Hearn and Horton dates back to a confrontation at this very track in 1987. What's in store tonight for these rival drivers? You won't want to miss it. When we come back, the engines will roar to life and the green flag will fly for Mr. Dirt Track USA. This is Rush Hour live on Sports Channel. Rush Hour on Dirt is brought to you in part by CarQuest Auto Parts Stores, Budweiser, Racing Electronics, Wildfire, Bob Hilbert Sportswear, Hoosier Racing Tires, Sunoco Race Fuels, and by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day, genuine Chevrolet. Are you looking for a really fun ride that'll last a long time? Then jump into a Chevy S-Series. It's one ride you don't want to miss. Chevy trucks like a rock. If you're filling your prescription worrying about what you should take with what and when you should take it and how it will affect you, maybe you're going to the wrong place. So break out of there and come to Phase Drugs, where the pharmacy is our business. Our pharmacists are always there to answer questions on dosage, drug interaction, insurance, and more. And Accufax lets you keep the Phase Pharmacist advice at your side night or day. It's a major breakthrough in making prescriptions easy. Everything you've ever read or anybody's ever said about dogs, it's true and then some. Things happen quick, trouble happens quick. You know, it's a tough racetrack for racing. When you look at the, the wall and see all the tire marks, see all the places people have made mistakes. You have to drive it to understand how tough it is and what they mean when they say too tough to tame. Bush Beer is proud to bring you the great tracks of NASCAR, now featuring the Darlington Raceway. You're on the edge all the time here. I mean on the edge. First day, my new boss throws me the keys. Get it fixed, kid. So I took it to Charlie. Guy's a real pro. Let's get the parts. Charlie says at CarQuest, they believe to be the best, you gotta use the best parts. All CarQuest parts are guaranteed, and there are more than 3,000 CarQuest stores with every part you can think of. Relax, it's done. Did you get the car fixed, kid? Um, yes, sir. Where'd you get the parts? CarQuest? Welcome to the pros, kid. at Lebanon Valley Speedway for Mr. Dirt Track USA. And the engines are about to spring to life here for our big race. And we always watch the skies, whether such a factor with dirt modified racing. And we have absolutely ideal conditions for racing tonight. And as the engines now spring to life and the fans, this huge throng on hand here at Lebanon Valley, uh, rises to its feet, we are just about ready to go racing. The track looks to be fast and fabulous. Lightning fast, that's the way I would describe it, Doug. The heat races, as I mentioned earlier, were very, very exciting. It's tight, uh, it'll be a, I suspect, a contact sport here tonight. Let's take a look at our race analysis. Lebanon Valley Speedway, the super fast play oval. 75 laps, caution laps count until the final three tonight. 36 cars in the starting grid, $17,500 to win out of a total purse of $46,000. The Rush Hour on Dirt Paste Car by Chevrolet leads our starting field. Top three.
three finishers in tonight's five heats. Drew for their starting position. On the pole, the Hurricane, Steve Payne in the 7X, outside the 18 of Bud Christman. Second row on the inside will be Jeff McKee. He's on the middle. Don York, he was a winner there earlier this summer. Eddie Marshall, the second generation driver, starts outside in car number 98. Row three, the 74 of Frank Cozy and the 87 of Jimmy Horton. Row four, inside starting number seven will be the 1988 winner of this race. That's Kenny Brightbill alongside as the defending champion of the race, Jeff Hetzler out of Wallkill, New York. Now, Gary Waters was to start inside row five. He's been scratched. Kenny Tremont in the 115. Bobby Albert sits inside of row number six alongside as Brett Hearn, five-time Mr. Dirt Track USA champion. So he's won this race five times. He's just 37 years old. 1991, Mr. Dirt Doug Hoffman inside. Inside row seven, outside Tim Fuller. Eighth row on the inside, Hollywood Frank Jezembowski out of Middletown, New York. He was the runner-up in this race last year. Alongside us, Dickie Larkin from Sheffield, Massachusetts, a two-time Lebanon Valley track champion. Row nine is comprised of Jeff Trombley and Billy Decker. Row 10 inside, starting 19th, will be A.J. Romano, the second-generation driver out of Johnstown in the Skip Seymour car. Alongside us, Bobby Viren driving the Council Herald car tonight, number 35. Rich Rickey won this event two years ago, and Chris Chris Moore in the zero. Delaware driver Jamie Mills sits inside of row number 12. At the outside is Bill Wilson, 53-year-old racing veteran out of Ramsey, New Jersey. Row 13, veteran Jack Johnson. Outside, Guy Sheldon. Row 14 on the inside, eight-time track champion here, Tommy Corrales. He's out of East Greenbush, New York, alongside is Jack Cottrell from Rock City Falls, New York. Row 15 is Rob Pitcher and Sparky Lowe. David Kamara, the 27-year-old driver from Vermont, sits inside of row 16, alongside is the dangerous one, nine grand Danny Johnson. Gary Gallup is in row 17, and Scott Kurtzner is outside. Second generation driver Donnie Corellis is in the field. He's in row 18 on the inside, so we got the father and the son in this race, and Donnie Ackner starts in the back of the back with car number 97. He's the 45-year-old driver out of nearby West Sand Lake, New York. The CarQuest Auto Parts in-car camera tonight being carried by Frank Cozy. No surprise there. He's in the uh, Haskings and off number 74 Smith Concrete CarQuest car here this evening. We should be seeing some great shots from Frank goes in the car quest in car camera. All right, starter Jay Beverwick eyes the field into turn three. Steve Payne is the man who will trigger this race. The green flag comes out, and Mr. Dirt Track USA is underway at Lebanon Valley, and a quick start for Steve Payne as he storms into the first and second turn, but Crispin tries to close the gap. Absolutely bonsai start. You saw him running three and four wide down the straightaway. A little contact as they work through turns one and two. We see sparks flying from one of the cars. But here is the leader, Hearn, being chased by Crispin as they come down to complete lap number one. Marshall running in position number three. Steve Payne in the 7X is your leader. But Crispin is second. Eddie Marshall is third. And Chuck McKee is fourth. Down the back stretch, Jeff Hetzler currently in fifth. Here we're watching the battle for the number two spot, the red number 98. That's Eddie Marshall. Marshall, the second generation driver out of Pound Ridge, New York, trying to run down Christman in the Brioski car number 18. Look at how these cars just slingshot off these high banks and then head down the back straight away. Here we see Kenny Tremont working on the inside. There is Hearn on the outside of Frank Cozy as they run off into turn number three. There's the banking we talked about. They say it's only 20 degrees, but it looks taller than that to me, Doug. They really back them in here. Long, narrow straightaways, very, very tight corners with those steep banks. Here is Jimmy Horton running on the outside in the yellow and white number 87. Tremont working the bottom of the racetrack. They run side by side, wheel to wheel. You saw what happened when, uh, off, when uh, Horton was running wheel to wheel with Hearn here on uh, Tuesday evening. Well, no problem right now. And we're talking about high speeds. The fastest part of this track is right near the end of the back stretch where the speeds reach 130 miles an hour. They scrub off a little speed going through those very tight corners. The average speed here is about 100 miles an hour. So that's where you're seeing right there that 130 mile an hour spot as they shut them down and run them up into turn number three. That's a battle for the number six position. And Tremont has it over Jimmy Horton. Horton is right there. He's been working on the bottom. And now he's going to try to change lanes. But they're going to be pressured now by the Bobby Albert car coming into the camera. That's a white car, number 96, Bobby Albert from Wappinger Falls, New York. He's a regular.
Taylor here at the Lebanon Valley Speedway. He's using that home track advantage as he runs the bottom of the racetrack. We've got a three-car tangle. There's Bill Wilson in the yellow number seven, Jamie Mills in 30. Jack Johnson is in red car number 12B. So the three-car tangle uh, slows things down. That's over in turn number two. Looks like they'll all be able to back away. The two oldest, older drivers, I think they're the oldest drivers in the field. Uh, Ramsey is 53 and uh, Horton is 50. I'm sorry, uh, Johnson is 52. Yeah, Jack Johnson obviously with some front end damage. Rush Hour will continue with more coverage of Mr. Dirt Track USA from Lebanon Valley Speedway live on Sports Channel. Rush Hour on Dirt Dirt. In my garage, you'll find everything from a five horsepower lawnmower to a 5,000 horsepower dragster. Whether the guys are racing to finish the lawn or racing at the track, they choose Champion Spark Plugs. We choose Champion Spark Plugs for all our engines, and you should too. Champion, no matter what you drive. A Plus Mini Market, your 24-hour ticket to convenience. Now every 10 ounce, every 16 ounce, and every 20 ounce cup of Colombian coffee is just 69 cents at participating A Plus and A Plus Express stores, where one price fits all. Over 3,000 items. A Plus Mini Market, 24 hour convenience. Your store, plus more. Your Tri-State Lincoln dealers announce a better way to lease. With Lincoln's One Price Summer, every Lincoln is only $4.59 a month. No hidden fees, no long-term commitments. When you take a 24-month vacation from high monthly payments in the Lincoln Town Car, Continental, or Mark 8. Those who hesitate, pay more. So see your Tri-State Lincoln dealers now during Lincoln's One Price Summer. here in 50 feature wins all time. Three of those coming this year, and uh, he's having a great, great season. We mentioned earlier that his father is his uh, car owner, builds the engines. It's a family affair, these Tremonts, and they'd love to win this uh, big uh, Mr. Dirt Track USA Championship. Here we see a good battle as they're cozy in the blue and white number 74, being chased by Hetzler in the 33, and Horton is right there as a three-way battle for position number seven. Front straight away they come. There's Hetzler in the 33. Horton tries to go down low. Oh, the car spinning. You got to spin. That is. I couldn't figure out who that was, but Hearn is involved. AJ Romano is involved. The black car is uh, Kenny Brightbill. The black number 19. The 55 of Ricky. There you see AJ Romano in the red number four. Brightbill a defending, a, a former runner of this race. Oh, that's the 265. That's Chuck McKee. A little bit of oil fire there, but that's a. Uh, well, no, there is still fire there. McKee 
pulls away, but there is fire in the Dover brake car 265. And it looks like we have some damage on lap 16 to the Brett Hearn car. Now there's Chuck McKee. He's uh, going once again. We'll keep an eye on him and see if that fire uh, is out as he looks to duck into the pits, and he does come into the pits. That fire is still blazing, though. There's the oil cooler is back there, and no doubt that they've uh, broken a fitting or something or other. And speaking of fitting, there's the fall fittings, number 55. Oh, look Ricky at Brett's car, and there's uh, Hearn's Budweiser, number three. Uh, obviously bent uh, a bunch here in the early going. Seven is a right rear flat. So Brett Hearn is going to look to Negative. limp into the pits. Stopped up there. This is the scanner of Brett Hearn. Let's see if we can catch up with any of the communication there. Brett, remember, holds the only small block lead over uh, Doug in uh, school points. Okay, broken right rear torsional. Very, very pivotal situation here. As you mentioned, a small separation in the top uh, four or five positions in the points, and uh, Hearn, our point leader, uh, has a problem here, and if he's able to repair it, I'm sure he'll be down at least laps. Here's the replay and the spin. It looks like there was contact with the McKee machine. McKee goes around. Bobby Elbert makes contact on the outside. There's Cozy just going to nearly get by. Here's Hearn coming on the bottom, and he clips the bottom of the, the back of the 265 of McKee. Uh, Bright Bill with no place to go. In fact, he is all stopped, but he got run into. A.J. Romano is there. There you see Ricky coming in last in the red car. Uh, Looks like the most seriously damaged of the whole bunch is Brett Hearn. A lot of things going on in Hearn's life this week. Uh, the crash we talked about earlier, his son, uh, just a year, a little over a year old in the hospital, as a matter of fact, tonight he'll be released tomorrow. Uh, they brought a bunch of people. He is generally okay, and uh, he, the son that is. Uh, Brett's obviously okay, but a little hot right now. They brought a butt bus up from uh, New Jersey with uh, Hearn fans in it to watch the driver. And, uh, it's going to go on short here tonight. Remember, Brett was involved in a wreck just two nights ago, and his crew worked like demons to get the car ready and uh, all this to be finished so early here this evening. Tough. But we're back to racing now. Four-hour sleep, as a matter of fact. And there you saw Marshall making a move on the inside. He's taken over the number two spot. Tremont fights back on the inside. Oh, boy, Doug, we got him. Oh, they're all over the place. Narrow straightaways, narrow corners, and they're going 130 miles an hour when they back him into those high banks. The leader is Bud Crispin. That's a real surprise. Marshall, who is so very, very strong in his heat, runs in second with Tremont back in three. And then we've got Horton now showing in the number four spot. Hetzler runs in the number five position, and then back in six is our early race leader, Steve Payne. But he just lost that spot as Doug Hoffman went trucking on by in the Phil Chevrolet car number one. Yeah, Doug Hoffman now in a great position to gain on Brett Hearn in this whole series point race. They're all going to gain on Hearn. The crew is working on his car. He's still in it, but it's on pit road. He's losing some very, very valuable laps. There you see Horton running way up on the top of the racetrack, backing it into the corners, running it down the straightaway, slides it up on the top side, and here comes Hetzler on the inside. The Smitty's Reclamation 33 goes after Horton, but he cannot make the pass. We will give you lap counts as we go. There's a look at uh, the battle involving Steve Payne. We're on lap 22 of 75 here at Lebanon Valley. As the race action continues, Cowboy Paul Small is down in the pits with the Brett car, Brett Hearn car number three. Let's go to Paul Small. Brett Hearn's Budweiser car number three is on pit road. They're working on a couple of things on the car right now, Doug. First off, the front end nerf bar and some of the front end geometry is bent. The sheet metal on the right hand side is shredded on this car, but the main concern is with the trailing arm of the suspension in the rear of the car. They're also replacing a rear torsion bar in the Budweiser number three. A lot of work, but they are going to try to get Brett out on the racetrack before Mr. Dirt Track USA is over. Doug? Wow, what a job they have, Gary. Yeah, they're, uh, they're working hard, but they're definitely losing a lot of very valuable laps. And here are a couple of the point chasers that are having a great run here in the early going. You see Hetzler on the outside. He's just made the pass of Jimmy Horton. Horton runs the bottom of the racetrack. Hetzler, the defending champion, also won this race back in 1987 for a different team back then. But this is essentially the same car that he won with last year. Here's our race leader, Bud Christman, the Brioski number 18. There's the second place car, Marshall. Third is Tremont. Hustle down the front straightaway. Here they go into turn number one.
Tremont in the 115. Right behind Eddie Marshall in the 98. That's the battle for the number two spot. Two of the Lebanon Valley track regulars. Marshall, his father, a former racer here as well, couldn't be here tonight. He's in a town council meeting down in Pound Ridge. They're uh, lobbying for uh, some zoning variances, and they wanted to be here to watch his son, so he's watching them on TV tonight. And uh, Ernie, you're having a great time, I'm sure, because the kid is doing a great job for you here in the early going. Well, you know, Eddie has 13 career wins here, but he has never won Mr. Dirt Track USA. We have a yellow on lap 28. Didn't see what happened. Perhaps it's the uh, 91 of Decker. Was he in trouble? Decker slowed Billy down. Decker slowed on the race course. Decker's running with another disadvantage here this evening. They blew up their good Lebanon Valley motor uh, last Saturday evening, and uh, they've got the small short track motor in tonight. They're down a bunch of horsepower, and now they're down a lap as well, or maybe down a lap as well. So we'll wait and see how that thing unfolds. This is Mr. Dirt Track USA, and our leader is the number 18 of Bud Chrisman. Our coverage will continue from Lebanon Valley. We are live on Sports Channel. Rush Hour on Dirt. Don't just go to the race, listen in, experience it live with a complete scanner package from Racing Electronics. Hear race strategy. Okay, those are stickers on there, Jeff. Crucial pit stops. All right, we can win this thing, guys. All the key moments. Just ask DW. If you ever go to one of these races, you ought to get you a scanner and just listen to the conversation. It is constant. Get your scanner where the pros get there. For your free catalog, call Racing Electronics, 1-800-272-7111. Dirt Sportswear Direct now features the Rush Hour Live t-shirts for men and women in sizes medium through extra large. Be a part of history. Order yours now. 1-800-979-DIRT. America's most sought-after video has finally come home. Cops Too Hot for TV. What the censors would not let you see is now available at a video store near you. This explosive video contains the most shocking footage ever recorded for cops. From the wacky to the wild. It's uncut, uncensored, unbelievable. Capture it now and you'll see it all. Coolest tape I've ever seen. It's so much fun. I love cops. This is the greatest video I've seen this year. You gotta get it. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Get cops too hot for TV. Even cops can't believe it. Now available at Tower Records and Video and video stores everywhere. Or call 1-800-247-5151 and order direct. We are back live at Lebanon Valley Speedway, Mr. Dirt Track USA. We're on lap 35, and we have a new leader. The 115 of Kenny Tremont is way out in front. He took the lead from Chrisman in a little wheel-banging deal over here in turn number two just a couple laps ago, and uh, that's the difference. He is now setting up blistering pace, trying to win this for the very first time. A man that we're keeping our eyes on is Danny Johnson. He started way back in position number 32. He's already up to nine. Oh, we got a crash right here on the front straightaway. Look out! Right on the front straightaway, a car turned around. That's Tommy Corellis, uh, perhaps Donnie Corellis. I'm not sure which of the Corellises that is. I believe that's Tommy. It's got TC on it. Okay, that's the veteran driver, Tommy Corellis. Uh, again, that was a father-son deal here. Eight-time track champion. He's only raced here a couple of times this year. They're devoting all their efforts to the uh, Donnie's car. Uh, but uh, the old man just couldn't hold off, and he had to come back here and run tonight and try to win this thing. And he is moving once again and smoking as well. Yeah, there's something rubbing up against one of the tires. Uh, the pits where the John
john schuman racing team will ah administer that automobile. you saw corrales just pass the number three of brett hearn who is back out on the track in the budweiser car. now he's going to head back into the pits but there's your leader the leaders as a matter of fact starting with the one fifteen of kenny tremont race leader all right well what do the tremonts feel about kenny now in the lead let's go down to the pits and paul small Ken Tremont Sr. on the radio with your son, Ken Tremont Jr. out here in the lead, and this car looks dominant right now, Ken. Right now, we're in good shape. Everything can hold through. You know, see how this restart goes. Everything keeps going the way it is. We're all set. you got to be hoping for this one right now. you got to believe it. <laughs> you got that right. And we're going green. And how about that?